but still riding high on Olympic gold, so I'll take the point, and I won't complain tonight. Oh, you're the only one. They look <laughs> sluggish out there. The Detroit Red Wings were in town as the Montreal Canadiens laced up tonight for the first time since the Olympic break. Netminder Carey Price, not in the lineup, however, sidelined with a surprising lower body injury. Ahead of tonight's matchup, the Canadiens honored the Olympic men's and women's hockey team. Standing ovations all around. Very nice tribute. To the game we go. Hab sluggish out of the gate. Seven minutes left in the first. P.K. Subban winds up with a shot from the point. Jimmy Howard doesn't know where it is, but he's able to fall on it, keeping it out of the net. A minute later, Subban gets tangled up with Darren Helm. Subban gives him a little extra push there, and he's given two for roughing. Detroit with the extra man, Johan Franzen, behind the net, gets the pass in front to Todd Bertuzzi, beats Peter Budai. Red Wings by one. Ten minutes left in the third. Brendan Gallagher works his way in front, gets the shot, light goes off, but it's called no goal. Play continues. Time winding down, Habs pull Budai and Brian Gianta. Going to get a backhand here, sending the game to overtime. Hope is renewed. But with just 27 seconds left in the extra frame, Gustav Nyquist picks up the rebound, scores the game winner, his 15th of the season. Detroit takes it 2-1, now holds a three-point lead for the final wildcard spot in the Eastern Conference. With the point for the OT loss, Montreal tied with Tampa Bay for second place in the Atlantic Division. We're joined live now by our Brian Wilde uh, down at the Bell Center. The house looked a little rusty out there. Yes, they definitely were rusty. It was not the most thrilling of games to me, uh, Chantal. In fact, when it strikes you that the most exciting moment of the night, a game that went to overtime, was the national anthem, that's not a great night. But it was a great national anthem sung in both languages. It was beautiful. P.K. Subban even sang it in both languages. But then they had to play the game, and it was a very defensive game. And there were many moments I just wished that the game would end. But no, it went to overtime instead. And in the end, P.K. Subban lost his man. And as much as we love P.K. Subban, he's a great hockey player. He made a mistake on that OT winner. It was that kind of night. Uh, fortunately for us, it was only one nothing in going to the third, and uh, we picked it up and uh, were able to generate a goal at the end. So that's a big goal. Do you feel sharp? Uh, I felt good. You know, I felt good out there. You know, uh, guys did a good job blocking shots. You know, I made some good saves and felt pretty good. In the third, there we started to, uh, you know, pressure their D a little more. Uh, you know, and it obviously paid off. Uh, you know, they were able to come through the first two periods uh, through neutral zone, out of their zone, pretty pretty easy. And uh, once we started pressing our D, they had a couple of turnovers, and uh, we were able to force some plays. You know, it's part of the game. You you gotta keep your composure and uh, keep uh, keep battling through it, trying to find a way to get the puck in the in the net. And uh, I thought we could have created a little bit more chances and uh, put a little bit of puck more on net, but. I'd, Give them credit, Detroit. They play tight and uh, they don't give much. So, but we still gotta find a way and the battle through it. The execution uh, uh, tonight uh, was not there, and uh, from both teams, by the way, you know, both teams played solid defensively, and there were not much space on the ice, and um, we put ourselves in a position to get uh, to get a point. And it's all you always disappointed when uh, you go to overtime and. Uh, and you don't get any points, and or uh, you wish you could get it in a shootout. Obviously, was not the case tonight. All right, Francois, let's play a little uh, Jeopardy. Uh, things that bore us for 500. Oh, uh, <laughs> what is uh, watching snow and wetting that it melts at the springtime? <laughs> That's pretty boring. Uh, for me, cabbage rolls. Okay. <laughs> I okay. really think they're terrible. Oh, well. How about this hockey game? How um, about that? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I was missing a Latvia Swiss uh, Olympic. That's uh, a good one. <laughs> that, uh, I mean, That's a good one, it's, too. It's too bad because, you know, after witnessing what we've witnessed in the Olympic break, uh, uh, the great hockey games there I was expecting a lot more uh, you know sluggish play maybe but involvement in the play and tonight it was not the case not for the Canadians that were not skating and not even for the Red Wings that were somewhere else tonight but you know it's too bad because the fans here were waiting for something oh they sure were and, and they that, were ready to go and that ceremony before the game mm -hmm. to honor uh, that was fantastic and that the problem is that it went from 
that high point mm -hmm. to the low point, even in overtime with that goal. Hey, pretty appropriate, a guy named NyQuil scored the winner. <laughs> oh, not NyQuil, but close to NyQuil. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I didn't see that one coming. I'm sorry. But, you know. It, okay, NyQuil. NyQuil. But, you know, but, you know, you know whatever happened, it, it's, it, it's a situation where the Canadian didn't deserve that point. They no. got it. And it's important because they lost tonight the game they had on hand with Toronto. Toronto is going to be here on Saturday, so they need to get those points, even if we make jokes about this kind of game. You know what? And let's wrap it with something serious for a change. Okay. okay. Chantel, they did take a point. And as much as we joke about tonight's effort, when the playoffs come around, they'll have needed that one point and they got it. That's right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. You can check out Brian's blog, Call of the Wild, at our website, montreal.ctvnews.ca. We're going to take a break. When we come back, the Montreal Alouettes have decided to part ways with a controversial player. Montreal Alouettes have said goodbye to wide receiver Arlen Bruce III. The 12-year CFL vet spent last season with the Owls after stints with Winnipeg, Toronto, Hamilton and BC. In his only year with Montreal, Bruce caught 64 passes for 851 yards and five touchdowns. But it was his actions off the field that got him in hot water with the team. The 36-year-old made anti-gay remarks in regards to Missouri defensive end Michael Sam's announcement that he was gay. His comments were not cited as the reason for his release, however. The team indicated the decision was made because of his salary and because new head coach Tom Higgins is hoping to start two Canadians at wide receiver this season. Westmount's Eugenie Bouchard celebrated her 20th birthday doing what she does best, dominating on the tennis court, this time at the Mexico Open in Acapulco. Bouchard's eliminated Israel's Shahar Peer in straight sets. She came out on top 6-2, 6-2 over Peer, who was once ranked 11th in the world, but has since slid to 85th. The 19th ranked Bouchard then celebrated the win by posing with a birthday cake that was covered in tennis balls. Not sure they'd be that tasty, but to each their own. The second seed in the tournament, Bouchard will now face Lara Arua Barrena of Spain. Blainville's Alexandra Wozniak also advanced, defeating Ashley Barty 7-6-5-7-6-2 to set up a match with China's Shuai Zhang. And today's play of the day comes courtesy of Major League Baseball Spring Training. First day of Grapefruit League play. We already have the catch of the year. Giants outfielder Michael Moores hits a long one. Oakland's Josh Reddick climbs the fence like Spider-Man and somehow comes down with the ball. Pretty good play. Absolutely. Great catch. Thank you very much, Chantal. Will this cold weather last for the next few days? We'll tell you after the break.